Today is the Feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe. I have an image of him here in um, my meeting room. Pictures him wearing his um, Auschwitz uniform with uh, the white and red crowns. When he was a boy, the Blessed Mother appeared to him and offered him either the red crown symbolizing martyrdom or the white crown symbolizing purity and perseverance. And she said, pick one. As so typical of the saints, he chose to take both. And all of that was fulfilled profoundly at the end of his life in Auschwitz. He was a remarkable priest. He did mission work in Japan. And he was very much focused on using contemporary media in order to evangelize. So he founded a monastery in Poland that had printing presses running 24-7. So he published Bibles, catechisms, magazines, books, any way to get the word of the gospel out in multiple languages, shipping that out to the world. A Gestapo came in and arrested him. He was in the middle of a morning's project. I've been privileged to stand in the room where he was taken by the Gestapo in 1941, uh, taken to a prison in Warsaw where he was beaten because he would not deny Jesus and taken to Auschwitz. And it was really there that his... Uh, priestliness just really ultimately shone forth in a heroic and sacrificial way. In Auschwitz, you got maybe a thousand calories of miserable food, and that was working outside in all weather, doing hard manual labor for up to 12 to 14 hours. Many days, he gave away his food ration. He heard secret confessions, talked people out of committing suicide by throwing themselves on the electric fence, even said secret masses. And in the end, he traded his life for men who had a family who had been randomly picked to die of starvation uh, because a fellow prisoner had escaped. So Father Maximilian stepped forward and said, I want to take that man's place. The guard asked, who are you? And he said, I'm a Catholic priest. So these men were placed in an underground cell and left there without water or food until they were dead. And he led those men in a holy and noble death. So rather than cursing, screaming, um, despairing, as so many people in that situation did, out of Maximum Colby's cell came singing, came praying, came laughter. When the guard would look in on them, Father Colby would say, we're praying for you and we love you. Flip the guard out. He didn't know what to do with love and charity to that heroic degree. So it was on this day in 1941, the vigil of the Assumption of the Blessed Mother, to whom Father Colby was profoundly devoted, um, that he was killed with a shot of carbolic acid. He was the last one in the cell alive, and they needed to clear the cell out for another set of victims. So it was on the vigil of the assumption that Father Colby heroically gave his life as, as a martyr to love, as St. John Paul canonized him. So this day we just pray for all priests, that our hearts may be marked by such a profound sacrificial love for God and his people that that we would do something similar if we were in that situation. So Father Colby was able to do something that heroic and noble because every day of his priesthood, he lived out the little sacrifices. And that's always true for us. St. Maximum Colby, pray for us.